If I put myself in like Putin's shoes or Xi's shoes, I mean, just as a hypothetical, and I'm sure they might do the same yeah. thing to us if they were having a discussion and say, okay, this doesn't necessarily have the stigma. And what if I could build an AI that would just be the cyber attack, you know, to the max and all of a sudden I'd watch America or, or Ukraine or whatever my enemy was and everything would be shut down from an infrastructure standpoint. And there's no real stigma because like there's not bodies in the streets. You might argue that we're a little ways away maybe from the AI stigma and also if it developing so fast, maybe that stigma won't get there. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that argument? Yeah, I think the, my answer to it is let's look at what the actual risks are of, of ending humanity here. It, that's not the risk that someone does some little cyber attacks and stuff. And we, we, you don't even need AI for that in particular. You can do better cyber attacks for sure with AI, but that's still fairly low tech stuff. The reason I am so motivated for doing the call is because the most powerful AI systems we are building now are on the cusp of of, um, of artificial general intelligence that can outsmart humans at everything. You know, this is something most people thought was only going to happen in 50 years or 30 years. And now Microsoft has a paper out talking about sparks of AGI, effectively saying that it's almost here. Maybe we'll get it this year, next year, in two years. Machines that could, in principle, do almost all human jobs, you know, better than us. Some people think it'll take 10 years. Some people still think it's going to take much longer, but a lot of very serious people think we're, we're almost there. And the issue with these things is that uh, we right now don't understand hardly at all how they work. So if you, if you ask, for example, why was it that, there, that GPTJ pers seemingly persuaded a Belgian man recently to commit suicide or that another chatbot tried to convince a New York Times uh, journalist to leave his wife. It was not because some engineer involved in building it was like, ha, 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 I'm going to mess with these people. No, it's just they had no idea it was going to do these things. They're gigantic black boxes. We had a big conference that I was the lead organizer of here at MIT just last weekend on exactly this. How can we understand how these actually work? There is a lot of momentum, a lot of progress in the field. But we're still largely clueless on these things. And, you know, if you're Putin, if you're Xi Jinping, or for that matter, if you're any powerful entity in the U.S., if you build a system which is vastly smarter than humans and you have no clue how it works and you're aware of the fact that uh, we haven't fig get, figured out any way of, of making these systems safe for guaranteeing that they're going to do what we want, pressing the start button is basically like, playing Russian roulette. And that's actually the last thing that a very powerful person would normally want to do, right? We we should not think of um, the, re the reason why the Chinese or the Russians or whatever avoid doing this is to try to do America a favor. The reason they would avoid pressing start on this is because they like, you know, being in control. You know, the Chinese government is just as interested in having control as any Western government, you know, maybe more, you could even argue. So that's the that's that's the reason why we currently don't need to worry much about that. I think you can even see today which country has cracked down the hardest on their tech companies so far. Number one is actually China, because they feel quite concerned, and I think rightly so, that one of the Chinese tech companies is going to deploy some sort of giant um, super intel super powerful AI system that's going to do stuff that they don't understand. So it's in the self-interest, in other words, of the most powerful countries and their secret services, et cetera, to not do anything reckless. That's why the biggest threat right now, I think, is instead coming from the private market, where everybody is just trying to make more money. And uh, you can make a lot of money on things in the short term, even if you don't understand how they work, and even if you can't control them. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonRealTV forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. 
He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year is going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that want to join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you going to do? What's the choice that you're going to make?